Hello students! Today we're going to calculate the centroid of an area by solving problem F9-1 from Hibbler's Statics textbook, 14th edition. In this problem, we are given a shape bounded by the lines x equals 0, y equals 1, and y equals x cubed. And we're asked to find the centroid of this area. Now the first thing we need to do is identify the area in question. Because we're given the three bounding lines, x equals 0, which is simply the y-axis, y equals 1, which is a constant horizontal line, and y equals x cubed, then the area in question will be the area bounded by these three lines. In other words, it'll be the area that I'm shading right now. In order to find the centroid of this area, we need to do a little bit of integration. If this area were simply a rectangular or a triangular shape, then we could find the centroid quite easily. However, this is not the case for our problem. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what our limits are. We know that the area starts at line x equals 0, or at the intersection between x equals 0, y equals 1, and y equals x3. That is actually the origin, where both x and y are 0. On the vertical direction, it is bounded by the line y equals 1. And in the horizontal direction, it is bounded by the point of intersection between y equals x cubed and y equals 1. There's only one possible value where these two intersect. That is when both x and y are equal to 1, because 1 cubed is simply 1. So we have our limits. Our shape will have to be integrated from y equals 0 to y equals 1, and from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Now that we've identified our shape and defined our limits, we need to determine or establish a coordinate system to solve this problem. Because this problem is given in the x and y plane, it's easy to set our coordinate system as simply x and y. The way we set our coordinate system is by first selecting a random point at one of the edges of our shape. In this case, I'm going to choose a random point with coordinates x, y. Now, if I set x, y as my random point, now I can take a strip of a differentially small area drawn as a rectangle. I can blow up my differentially small area here for better context. If I know that this cor x coordinate of my point is x, that means that the width of my differentially small area is also x. In the y direction, our width should be our differentially small length dy. Now for this infinitesimally small rectangle, where is the centroid? We know that the centroid of a rectangle is located right at the middle of the rectangle itself. So if we wanted to find the coordinates of the centroid, which we will call x squiggly and y squiggly, how would those coordinates in the xy plane relate to the point xy? In this case, we know that the centroid is at the center of the rectangle. So if we were to measure from the left, in other words, from the y-axis, to the center of the rectangle, that measurement will be equal to one half of x. However, if we're measuring from the x-axis to the centroid, that measurement will simply be equal to y. This means that for a random point x, y, the centroid of the differentially small rectangle at that point will be located at one half x and y. Now this doesn't seem like a very crucial thing to do right now. It will come in handy when we start our integrals. The next thing we need to do is to figure out what type of integral we're going to use. In this case, we are looking for the centroid of an area. So our integral would have to be over an area. The x-coordinate of the centroid for our area should be equal to the integral of x squiggly dA evaluated over the area A. All that divided by 
the total area, which is the integral of the A evaluated over the area. The y coordinate of the centroid should be equal to the integral of y squiggly dA evaluated over the area divided by the area of the shape which is simply the integral of dA evaluated over the area. So these are the tools that we will use to solve this problem. We know what type of integral we will use. We also know the relationship between a random point xy and our x squiggly and y squiggly coordinates. Now we can relate the area dA to the x and the y coordinates. So let's see how we do that. For this differentially small area, we can calculate its value dA by simply taking the product of the base and the height. In this case the base is x and the height is dy. That means that for this differentially small element, the area will be x dy. However, we know that x is a function of y. So when it comes to integrating, we don't really want to have two different variables that are functions of each other. Instead, we want to express everything in terms of just one variable. How do we do that? We know that our point x, y, it's located anywhere in the line y equals x cubed. Because of this, we can find a relationship between x and y. Since we know that the point will be located at line y equals x cubed, we can express this x in terms of y by solving for this equation. In this case, x will be equal to the cubic root of y, or y to the power of 1 over 3. We can take this relationship between x and y and apply it to our differentially small area. And that is how we convert an area integral into a length integral. Now, we can apply everything we've come up with into our solution. We know that the x-coordinate of the centroid is found by taking the integral of x squiggly dA over the integral of dA. However, we know how to relate x squiggly to x and how to rela relate x to y. Remember that x squiggly was equal to 1 half x. But we also know that x is equal to the cubic root of y. That means that x squiggly will be equal to 1 half of the cubic root of y. Let's apply this into our integral. Now we evaluate this across the area dA. But we also know that the area dA is equal to cubic root of y times dy. And because we are evaluating in the y direction now, we need to evaluate across our y limits. In this case, the limits go from 0 to 1. This has to be divided by the area, which is simply the integral of dA, which is simply y to the power of 1 third dy evaluated from 0 to 1. And that is what our integral looks like. Looks like a tough integral, but it's not really that hard. Let's see how we can simplify this integral. We can take out one half because it is a constant. We know that y to the power of one third times y to the power of one third is the same as y to the power of one third plus one third, or just two thirds. Now let's evaluate this integral. If we integrate y to the power of 2 thirds, that should be equal to 2 thirds plus 1, which is simply 5 thirds, and then take the inverse of that. Multiply by y to the power of 2 thirds plus 1. All this is evaluated from 0 to 1. In the denominator, we have the integral of y to the power of 1 third. That should be equal to the reciprocal of 1 third plus 1, which is 4 thirds, the reciprocal being 3 fourths. Multiply by y to the power of 1 third plus 1. Now this actually becomes very easy to evaluate. 
if y equals 1, then this equation simply equals 3 divided by 2 times 5, or just 3 over 10. If y equals 0, the entire equation equals 0. In the denominator, when y equals 1, the expression equals 3 fourths, and when y equals 0, the expression equals 0. Notice that the 3's cancel out, the 4 moves to the numerator, the 10 to the denominator. We can simplify this as 2 fifths of our units. If this problem were in, given in metric or English units, we would have used the appropriate units. We can also express this as simply 0.4 units. Now we can repeat the same process for the y coordinate of the centroid. Because we already know that the area integral won't change, I'm going to leave it as is. We know that the y coordinate of the centroid is found by integrating y squiggly across the area. But we also know that y squiggly is simply equal to y. And we know that the area dA is equal to y to the power of 1 over 3 dy. This is evaluated from 0 to 1. y multiplied by y to the power of 1 over 3 is simply equal to y to the power of 1 over 3 plus 1, or simply y to the power of 4 thirds. And now this becomes a simpler in integral to resolve. We have the reciprocal of 4 thirds plus 1 multiplied by y elevated to the power of 4 thirds plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 1. In the denominator, we already know that our area will be equal to 3 over 4. Evaluating this gives us 3 sevenths divided by 3 over 4. The 3's cancel out, the 4 moves to the numerator and the 7 to the denominator, and our final answer for the y coordinate is 4 sevenths. This is roughly 0.571. Now we found our coordinates for our centroid. The x and y coordinates for the centroid in this example are 0.4 and roughly 0.571. Now, it doesn't matter if you, your element was taken horizontally or vertically, even though your integrals might look slightly different, you still should have arrived at the same answers, 0.4 and 0.571.